animals that you know because sometimes they have the stink and the not so stink i call it yeah and, uh, <laughs> uh, i know i'm not colognes but splashes and everything. Okay. yeah we're ready for, do you want to be smoking in the interview or yeah, it doesn't matter. I smoke. Well, she smokes on stage, so you okay. know. <laughs> not, not quite on stage. I'm mean, singing. <laughs> singing. <laughs> okay, All right, Dan, let's talk perfume for a moment. Okay. When you're deciding that you're uh, going to try to pick a certain fragrance, do you smell it and say, whoop, no, that's Gladys Knight, not me? <laughs> I mean, how do you pick the, the kind you like? Oh, uh, for me, it's uh, obviously any fragrance for any woman has to agree with your body chemistry and uh, that's exactly what has to happen and that's how a fragrance usually is chosen that is uh, for me it is mm -hmm. and I wore um, what is the oriental family which happens to be what my my fragrance is in I wore Shalimar for so many years and I got to the point where I was con constantly asked what are you wearing and I finally said one day I'm going to say Dion and uh, made that decision to have a fragrance created expressly for me. As a result of giving it away as a table favors at my birthday party last year, year almost a year and a half now ago, my friends uh, kept calling me saying, I need some more fragrance. And they finally got to the point where they said, well, we're not going to ask you for it anymore. We want to buy it. And I s don't sound like too much of a bad idea. As it turned out, it was more than a notion. And uh, I'm in business. It's my company. It's not an endorsement. It's something that I have found has been very, very agreeable with most body chemistries. And I, I was testing without even knowing. I was testing by giving it to all of my friends who are all races, colors, and creeds. And it just worked. See, little did you know you'd be an Avon lady instead of uh, you know, a singing <laughs> well, lady. Well, I'm not quite an Avon lady. I'm a Dion lady. <laughs> a Dion lady. <laughs> yes. Uh, when you're marketing something with your name on it, I'm sure you're very protective Absolutely. of your name and all the goodwill that goes with it. So how do you uh, do quality control and just make sure that, you know, it's going out the way that you'd want to go out? Well, because it is my company and I have total hands-on with it. Um, I take care of any new product. I test it. It's on me. Um, the uh, stores that I'm in are the stores of my choice. Um, it reaches the lady that I want to reach. And those are the ladies who have been supporting me for the past 25 years that I've been in the business. Uh, as you said, I am very, very protective of my name. I just don't slap it around, which is why this is not an endorsement. Mm -hmm. So if my name is on you, you can trust it. Well, I'm sure a lot of people will be trying it out and be seeing it because it does smell good. I'll I'm tell glad you, you like it. I liked it. it. Um, your career, I was looking over the billboard charts last night, the history of your career. Mm -hmm. and. There were some surprises in there, frankly, to me, because I'd followed it very closely. I did not realize that you had not had that many number one records. Right. I mean, your records uh, were all really big hits and gold records, but I guess uh, the Spinner's record was, was a first. number one. And and that was surprising. Yeah, I know. And then, of course, the uh, that's where Friends are for. Right. But uh, you have any, what, what's the deal on that, I wonder? Well, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know what designates a number one record. Um, I sold more copies of I Know I'll Never Love This Way Again than I have so far of That's What Friends Are For. And yet, it was not a number one record. Let me say in prefacing this that you were also in competition at the time with the Beatles and oh, the Rolling yes. Stones and Creedence Clearwater Revival, and they were clogging up the uh, upper regions of the yeah, charts, well, so they, that has a lot to do with it. The British Invasion had an awful lot to do with it, not only for me, but every recording artist in the United States at that time. We were all fortunate enough to be able to get into the top ten, which I was consistently mm -hmm. doing, which I guess in its own way is as good as being number one. You know, it's, it's like the old saying, the critics don't like you, but the bodies were in the seats. You know what I mean? Right. So your business is a competitive business. Did you ever feel that you had any competition? Was there another lady singer uh, that you felt like you were maybe singing against or trying to outdo sometimes, maybe in mm -hmm. a fun way? Not not really. I, I never really felt that I had direct competition because of the songwriters that I was singing. Backrack, David, and Warwick were an entity that carved out a new niche in the world of music all to their own. So my competition, if we have to call it competition, was practically nil. Mm -hmm because nobody was singing the songs or the kinds of songs that I was singing. Uh, God gave you a beautiful voice, but he also gave you Burt Bacharach. 
and so Hal David. You, and Hal David. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I know you had to face the East occasionally and just oh, yeah. thank for those two people. Well, Bert I, can't sing though. That's one of his problems. <laughs> I don't think he can sing. I, I saw a, a documentary once where he was uh, apparently introducing a song to you for a recording session. Right. And it was I Say a Little Prayer. Right. He murdered it. And then you made well. it beautiful, but he he couldn't get those high notes that you could get. But he uh, but he wrote them in his songs. He's not a singer, <laughs> quote singer. He's uh, he's a musician, mm -hmm. an absolutely fabulous musician, and uh, he has a sound. <laughs> but I don't think that he would ever make his fortune in recording. I'm sure that he was, you know, because I say little prayer has a couple of pretty strong notes. Oh, yes, they do. Explain a recording session when how the process goes with him. Is it pretty much like with any other writer? Uh, you find a song, or does he more or less go to the piano and introduce it to you and give the little licks that he wants you to have, and then you put your own style to it? Well, when we'll talk about the trio, we called ourselves the Triangle Marriage that worked. How they wrote incredible lyrics, and obviously Backrack wrote wonderful melodies, and I was the interpreter of both. And we relied basically upon each other's expertise in those areas. Um, Bert uh, is a taskmaster. He wants to hear his notes, which I fully agree with. Any songwriter wants to hear their notes. Hal wants to hear his lyrics. And then they rely upon me to bring Dion to the, to the both of those, which is sometimes not as easy as most people might think it to be. Uh, when you take a song like Promises, Promises, mm -hmm. there's not too much you can do with that but sing it as it is. Um, we found a way to do it where it became my song. So everything that Burton and Hal wrote literally was tailor-made for me. It's like a fine suit that's cut on your body. No one wears it as well as you do. And that's basically the way that we worked. In the last few years, you've even recorded with uh, one of the Bee Gees, Heartbreaker, which was, a, yes. which was a great song. How do you go about going about material now? I mean, it's quite different. You don't have those guys plucking away at the piano for you, making custom clothes. Uh, yeah, well, I still do. Bert, uh, Bert and Carol now mm -hmm. are writing wonderful songs for me. What has happened, which is wonderful, is that is my spectrum has opened up. Uh, there's some fabulous songwriters and producers available to me at this point in time. So I'm getting songs constantly from David Foster, from Stevie Wonder, from uh, Kashif, from Luther Vandross, from really prime songwriter producers, as well as Bert and Carol. So the, the flow has not stopped, and I'm very grateful for, for that. Are you still having as good a time as you did when your first record was out? Oh, yeah. Every single record is an adventure. Every single one. Do you uh, enjoy hearing yourself on the radio if you just happen to be surprised? Yeah, you it's nice to hear that. I mean, it's, it's still, I'm a recording artist first, and I always will be. You know, that's the way that I, I started. You know, the performing end of it is, is a joy. That's that direct to you from me. Uh, but hearing that record on the radio is always wonderful. Do you uh, still enjoy going out on stage? You always have a big band with you, the times that I've, I've seen you. No, three. not always. I have a five-piece combo that travels with me. They're all, it's a rhythm section. And I do self-contained dates as well. Mm -hmm. but, I enjoy uh, you with the big band behind you. Thank I, you. I, 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 I love all that. <laughs> yeah. um, tell me a little bit about some of your family now. What is your relationship with Whitney Houston? Are you a Whitney is my first cousin. First cousin. Mm -hmm. And Sissy Houston is my aunt. Is your aunt. Uh, that little girl's done real well. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> she is phenomenal, and she's fabulous. She's very talented. Everything that she is getting at this point in time, she deserves. She really is earning it. Must be a talented family. It was your mother. Yeah, uh, I come a, from a singing I mean, family. Everybody in everybody my family sings. My sister sings. All my aunts and uncles, I come from a gospel singing group. Were your so, parents uh, really able to see a lot of your big success? be proud and to uh, oh, yeah. experience that. Oh, yeah, everybody in my family, you know, everybody has been very, very supportive, as we are of, of Whitney and of Sissy and anyone else who wants to venture out and do some wonderful things. I know we're real proud of you. Well, tell us the next couple of years. We're going to be seeing you. Uh, what's a great adventure you'd like to have, you know, in the world of entertainment? Is there anything left? I mean, you've won every award. You've Not really. I have the Oscar, the Emmy, and the Tony yet to get. Okay, <laughs> that's good enough. Thank you a lot. Appreciate Thank it. you. Time. We've got two <clears throat> yeah, just give me a nod or a wide or something, and we'll. I'm gonna get a wide first okay. Side, reverse. Promises, promises was the first Broadway play I ever saw. Was it really? Mm -hmm. And uh, I say a little prayer is my favorite one of yours. I still like to play that whenever I can go on the radio again. I, mm -hmm. uh, 
I do it. This is going to also air on the nationally syndicated radio show, so I'm sure that it's oh, one reason great. I said Heartbreaker because I that one I like a lot. Yeah. But uh, I've got my favorites. Good. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, Valley of the Doll song was okay. I mm -hmm. like that a lot. Another side of you. They now, do. when you cut a record like that with the with the uh, spinners, were they in the studio with you oh, at the yes. time? Because sometimes that's. Oh yes. No, know, I, that's the way I cut. Do it. So we're there together. That would be fun. Oh yeah. You ever think you ever try to sing with uh, with Whitney? Yeah, that's not uh, an improbability. How are your voices together? I don't know how that. Would, let's see. I'm trying to picture how that would uh, how that would sound. Her voice is kind of a clear, real kind of a. Well, it's called youth. Youth. <laughs> <laughs> Yours always had a lot of uh, it's a lot of power and uh, mm -hmm. and occasion. Well, you can do anything. Though. Well, she can too. She's a strong singer, very strong. And I think we we'd uh, do pretty good together. She's so hot, though. She came here last summer, I guess, and performed. Yeah. She's getting ready for another tour. She starts in July, I believe. How uh, heavily do you tour and go on the road? How many days a year now? Me? 50? Uh, now it's uh, about 20 weeks a year. Where do you normally play? Oh, we're all over the world. You play, you play a lot of clubs or you play in uh, more? Oh, yeah. We're all over. 